Hello, Joy here. Hey, how's everybody doing? It is Friday, January 12th. Oh my goodness, the month's almost half over. January 12th, 2018. And I told you I'd come back when I have something to show you. And I have three, maybe four things to show you. But um, anyway, <laughs> this has been the craziest day. I, um, I collect stuff all the time. I don't know if you guys do, but I, well, you, you couldn't tell it by my room right now, but I hate clutter. I cannot stand clutter. And um, I'm not a sentimental person. If the, somebody gives me something my great-great-grandmother had and it's in my way, actually, I have something like that. If you all would like to have it, it's for sale. <laughs> <laughs> they give me something and it's in my way I don't want it in my house I cannot stand clutter so I always have I use Brahms bags the ones with the handles they're really sturdy and they hold a lot and I'm always filling them up probably every single day I put something in a bag to send to the Goodwill so I had I think I counted 12 bags once I got to the Goodwill and I had um, two great big you remember those old um tourister suitcases they were real hard bodied suitcases and you got a big one and you got a medium sized one and you got a like a train case with them well jerry's mother was like addicted to qvc or what's that other one home shopping <laughs> and she was always i don't can't remember how many of those shark vacuums she had but she had several sets of these tourister suitcases and so I rescued two of them and I brought them home and I thought, oh, you know, Jerry and I might go someplace someday and we might need a suitcase. <laughs> so they've been in my attic ever since his mom died and that's been, I don't know, three or four years ago his mother died. And every time I go out in the attic, I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna use those, I need to get rid of them. So I finally lugged those downstairs, put them with the 12 bags, put them all in my car and I went to the Goodwill. And you're like, who cares, why are you telling us that? Well. <laughs> When you go to the Goodwill, it's in a different town than my store is in, and it's a different town that my regular bank is in, and it's like 25 miles away from here. But as I was going to the Goodwill, I noticed that my bank, it's called Landmark Bank, and I noticed, I went, oh, look, there's my bank. And I had two deposits to make. They came from Choice Home Warranty. Choice Home Warranty never, ever, 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 ever has a repairman. When I call them and say something's broken, they say, okay give us 72 hours to try to find somebody they never find somebody and they say find somebody yourself and so then when i find somebody myself i have to pay them myself and then 30 days later i get a check so anyway i had these two checks from them and i wanted to put them in the bank they were sitting right there on the seat so when i turned got out of goodwill came back came back by the bank the bank has like four entrances you know all banks do and the two front entrances were perfectly normal as usual. The ATM machine was there, normal as usual. There were cars in front of the bank, cars on the side of the bank, and I noticed three policemen. And in the back, on the left side of the bank, were two police cars and two policemen. The policemen were outside the car. Then, on the right side in the back, I noticed one policeman, and his police car was like half blocking the road. Well, I didn't think anything about it. I thought, well, maybe the policemen are just taking a break or something. You know, what are they doing out here? <laughs> And, the, and there was no tape, there was no signs, there was no cones, there was no nothing saying you cannot come in here. So I just pulled in the bank and went over to the side to go in the back where the drive through is to make my deposit. And the policeman started walking um, over in front of his car and I thought, oh, that's nice of him because now I can go around his car. And so I started to move to go in front of his car which would have gotten me around to the back and he went like that to me <laughs> I'm like I went like this what's going on I don't get it and he went <laughs> I think he wants me to turn around <laughs> but I thought how am I gonna turn around there's not enough room there's cars on the left cars on the right I'm in the driveway and he goes so I had to go Back a little, forward a little, back a little, forward a little, back a little, forward a little, back a little. <laughs> Finally got turned around and left the bank. So I don't know if my bank was being robbed of it and steal all my money out of it. But what a crazy morning. <laughs> so finally, I said forget the bank. Went and got the groceries and came back home. So anyway, 
Yesterday, I had a new lady come to take care of my mom. Her name is Peggy. And Peggy was just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. She was actually too wonderful with my mother. She was calling her baby and sweetheart and darling. <laughs> she was practically carrying my mother up and down the hall. And you know my mother can walk just fine. But if she has somebody who'll feel sorry for her, I mean, she'll turn into a limp dish rag, you know. And so I was watching Peggy with her. And a little while I went into my mom's room and I said, Peggy, will you come out here, please, so I can talk to you? <laughs> and I told her, I said, you've got to quit being so nice to my mother. <laughs> it's such the craziest thing on earth to tell someone. <laughs> I said, of course, you know, it's the first time she's ever been with my mother. And I said, my mother can walk just fine. She can walk up the stairs, down the stairs. She can walk around the house. She can walk outside over to the barn and back. So don't, um, I said, don't baby her and don't treat her like she can't do anything. Because then she'll expect me to be like that once you're gone. But anyway, I was telling Doreen that today. She said, that is so funny. <laughs> In fact, she said, when Doreen came this morning, she's the usual lady that comes every day, she said, your mom is just sad today. She's acting so weird and she's kind of mean. And I said, well, are you calling her baby girl? Are you calling her darling and sweetheart? <laughs> and so I told her what I just told you. She said, that is hilarious. So anyway, while Peggy was here all day long yesterday, I got to work on my edit a quilt. I want to show it to you in a minute. And I learned how to be a good piecer. Are you going to faint? I am. <laughs> I want to show you how the points match on these pieces right here. It is amazing. Look at that. Look at those points. Sewed it one time and one time only. Didn't rip it out. Didn't re-sew it. Look at those points. Are they wonderful? There should be three of them. One of them's over there. But isn't that wonderful? I am so proud of me. And it's it's really not me. I, um, you know, it's a crafty uh, kit that I bought. And the lady shows how to press them flat in the back and then how to pin them so the, uh, the points match. So I'll show you if you're a quilter and you care. Okay, hold on one second. So the first thing you have to do is you press everything flat on the back, everything open, okay? Because there's so many seams. And so then you figure out what goes with what. And this isn't probably going to show very good like hers does. You know, they have camera people that go around and they zoom in and they zoom out. <laughs> I don't have camera people. So I'm just going to have to show you and you're going to have to play like you can see it. What you do is you take your two pieces that you're going to sew together, okay? And you take the piece on top and you take a pin and you poke it in the seam right underneath that point. You see that intersection? In the back it's a point. Let me hold it over here. See the point? You guys that are quilters you know this. But some of you are new, I know, because you told me you were. So I'm putting that pin in the seam right under that point and then I'm picking up what it's going to match to and I'm putting it right where it goes in that seam on top of the point on that block. Now you kind of have to fiddle with it a little bit to make sure it goes in the center of the seam. Otherwise it could be like on the top but sideways and you don't want it that way. So then you push the pin all the way through, okay? The pin's all the way through, just straight through. It's not through and then back out, it's just straight through, okay? So then you hold that together so it can't move and you take two more pins and you put one pin right in the seam on the side of that pin and another pin on the seam on the other side and I'll, I'll show it close to the camera in a second and pin it but look how you pin it. You pin it from the bottom up. So see this is still sticking through that one pin and then I put one pin on the right and one on the left and now you can take this straight pin and pull it out. And so now you just sew over that, take the pin out just before you get to it, sew that seam and every single time they came out perfect. I am so excited. Those first baskets I did that are in the other room waiting for the rest of the baskets, 
I ripped them out and redid them, ripped them out and redid them, ripped them out and redid them. I may have done some five or six times. <laughs> so I am just so, so excited that I have figured this out. I didn't figure it out. Um, I'm sorry y'all don't know the lady's name. There's too many things to remember when you're 67 years old. Oh, I have to tell you something else, being 67 years old. <laughs> One of you told me, it's a comment under my last video, and it says, Hey, Joy, some lady mentioned your blog on her blog, and her name is The Cursing, I don't think it's The, it's just Cursing Seamstress. And I've heard of her before, but I never watch her blog because I don't want to hear anybody cursing. I'm not a cursor. I have one word I say. It's that S-H word, you know. I told Terry, I'm trying to turn that into shoot, just for you. <laughs> okay. Now, how come one's that way and one's this way? I don't know, because I did it backwards. So anyway, <clears throat> I googled Cursing Seamstress, and sure enough, it came up. And her last vlog, she is telling people 10 of the sewing vlogs that she likes and she watches. So I, I turned it on and I thought, I wonder what she said about me. <laughs> and so she talks about several of them before she gets to me. And finally she gets to me and she says, now this lady, she is a quilter, but she sews some too. And she's an older lady. <laughs> so I thought, oh great. <laughs> The only thing she remembers about me is I'm ancient and I quilt and I sew. But anyway, I guess it could be worse. But I just thought that was so funny. And it's so, I don't know. I don't mind being the older lady. I really don't. I mean, I work really hard to get this old, you guys. <laughs> There's no time in my life I want to go back to and live again. So I'm happy to be 67. But anyway, I just thought it was funny. She's, she's the, oh, she's an old lady. Anyhow. I've shown you how to do that. So see, this is ready. Those two points right there. Two pins here and two pins here. And I don't really need these two, but I put them in anyway. And then my seams will match this perfect. Okay, so then I want to tell you something else. You know, I'm a Missouri Star quilt aholic now. <laughs> Did you all know that there is a video out there? Oh my gosh, how could you find it? I guess you could go to YouTube and put in Missouri Star Quilt Company and it might come up. But one of Jenny's sons evidently started this company. And it comes on and there's this kind of shabby looking guy standing on a stage and he's got on a sweatshirt that says something across it and jeans and um, I mean, you know, you would expect a guy that's making a speech to a class somewhere to kind of be in a suit or something. And he apologizes. I apologize for the way I look. I had an early flight this morning. And he starts talking about businesses, starting a business, going to college. And I'm like, who is this guy? Who is this guy? And why did he come up on my computer? I didn't know it had anything to do with Missouri Star Quilt Company. This, you know how one will just play after another video. You know, I'm watching her make a quilt. Or I was watching something else. Oh, it was a lady that, that was visiting there. She's a teacher and she was visiting there and she had done a tour of their buildings. And so then he just automatically came up after that. And so anyway, I was about to turn him off because I didn't know who on earth he was. And um, he said, I decided to start a quilting company. And I went, you start, start a quilting company? Who is this guy? <laughs> so anyway, I listened to it to the end. If you guys find it, Listen to it. It's the story of Missouri Star Quilt Company and how it got started. And it talks about the Block Magazine and my light just burned out. So if my head's really dark, I'm sorry. <laughs> but he talks about the Block Magazine and how they have hundreds of thousands of subscribers. <laughs> so I would say they are doing pretty well as a quilt company. But anyway... I watched that, I watched the girl give the tour, and then, I don't know which one I watched, but it was a recent one, and Jenny was showing some kind of quilt, but then she said, she said, oh, I have the funnest thing I do when I just want to relax. She said, it's called Crumbs, and she said, I, she learned it from this lady, she has such an unusual name, I'll probably remember it. I think her name was Victoria Findlay Wolf. Maybe, we'll see how close I am, <laughs> got any of them right. 
was there, and I guess she wrote a book, <laughs> and maybe this is in the book or something. But it's called Crumbs. And what you do, I know what it was, it was the quilt that has the big gray zigzags in it. And then down at the bottom, there's one zigzag that's colored fabrics. <clears throat> that's the one that it is, if you can tell by the picture on the front of the video. So what you do is you save all your scraps. She said everybody in the company brings their scraps to her. And then you just, you sew them together. You sew it and you clip it and you sew it and you clip it and you sew it and you clip it. And you keep on sewing it until you have a 10 inch square. So look at what I have. My very, very first 10 inch square. And so then imagine if you have two of these and you put one on top of the other and then you do four of those half square triangles out of it, how cute it would be. So if you guys see that video, look at it and you'll see how she used them in that quilt. So this is my new fun thing to do. This is all the scraps off the, um, what kind of quilt is it called? Bargello. Terry's making a Bargello quilt and uh, I, cut some of the strips into three and a half inch, was it? I think it was three and a half inch strips or something I cut for her. No, two and a half inch strips. And so this was what was left over and I asked her if I could have it. So that's how I made my crumb square. All right, I wanna show you something else. Then how many things did I show you now? I showed you perfect piecing. I showed you crumb quilting. One more thing, hold on one second. Ta-da! Can you see this? Can you see this? This is from Rhonda. Do y'all know Rhonda and Rhonda's Creative Life? If you will Google Rhonda's Creative Life, she has a blog, not a vlog, a blog, B-L-O-G. And she made several of these and she decided to give some away. And I actually won one of them. And I just thought when I saw the picture of it on her website, I thought, oh, big deal, I don't know if I'd ever use that. Well, when I won it and she sent it to me, I put it next to my sewing machine and start putting stuff in it, and I love it. I just love it, love it, love it. Because you can see your stuff. What I use now, hold on. I'm coming. It didn't go away. What I'm using now is this. Well, things, if you could see down in the middle of it, little screwdrivers, um, little knives, little needles, little lots of stuff just get lost down in there, and you can't see it. And when you have this, you have different levels to put your stuff in, and you can just see it so super good. And so I ordered 12 of these little thingies, and I'm going to make a whole bunch of them. Let me show you what these are. They're these. It's called Designed and Built for a Clear Purpose. <laughs> Does that tell you anything? <laughs> Source one. It doesn't even have a name, you guys. Good gravy. Honestly, it doesn't even have a name. But it's one, let me take the plastic off. It is a plastic holder thingy. You could put a picture in it, that sign see is in it, and you can just pull that sign out. So you could put like a picture in it and use it for a frame. I think it's like called a document holder. But it's what's inside this. And Rhonda sent me the directions for it, and I bet if you go to her blog and scan down a few blogs, if you'll see my name, Joy Rewan, such and such-and-such, you can probably find the directions for this. But I just think it's darling, and I'm going to make a whole bunch of them. Okay, so that's thing number three. And did I sew anything lately? Yes. <laughs> this is something else I've done lately. <clears throat> Why I did this, I do not know, because you know I have sure fit designs and I love it. Well, this lady is always emailing me. I watched an online expo a few months ago, and this lady was one of the people in it. And all it really is, is people who sew and people who quilt trying to sell a bunch of stuff, but that's really the way it is at a real expo too, right? Well, this lady has made something called the Fit Nice System. Fit nice, one word, F-I-T-N-I-C-E. And supposedly, you can make everything in the world out of this one pattern. You're supposed to be able to make jackets and hoodies and tops and everything in the world. And so this, after many alterations, I don't have it done yet, but this is it. <laughs> the fit nice system. 
I'm not crazy about this fabric, but it was a knit, so I used it to cut it out. The fit nice system doesn't fit worth a hoot. I was just so, so disappointed in it. I had to put a bust start in it, and I had to bring it down from her 42, which I have a 42 bust, I had to bring it down to the size 36. It was huge. I had to cut four in two inches off each side to even get it to fit me. I thought, man, this is just a joke. So I highly unrecommend the Fit Nice system. Okay? But anyway, it's going to fit me nice because of all alterations I did to it. I did the round back, I did the sway back, and I put a bust dart in the front. Full bust adjustment. Okay, so that's that. And now I have the biggest surprise, surprise to me, that I actually almost finished my edit quilt. Hold on a second and I'll show it to you. I'll put it right here. Okay, here it is. The seasonal silhouette quilt. I am up to the point where I have to add the borders. Remember, this is the seasons. This is January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Why August has a mail mailbox with mail in it? I don't know. Maybe you only get mail in August. <laughs> What's after August? September, October, November, December. So now I'm ready to put the border on and I don't know what to use for the border. I tried blue. I've got the green here. Let me see. I don't know if turning the camera that way works. We'll try it. There would be the green. This, I thought, I wonder how red or pink would look with it. It was so hard for me to do this. I also tried, hold on, I know it looks screwy right now. I also tried another color here underneath the red piece. I tried a purple piece. I wonder if that's going to be upside down and backwards when I show it to you guys. <coughs> but I don't know what to do. So I'm stumped again. But I'm really excited that I got at least that far. So once I can determine, I'm probably going to use the green is what I'm going to use. I really don't have any other colors that I have enough of. Even though I've been to the boutique store, what, twice now? So, if you want to know what quilt this is, I'll show you. Hold on with me while we take a walk. It is from this book, Seasonal Silhouettes, Edit a Sitar. Okay? And there they all are. And you can buy all the pieces for it from her. That's what I did. All of those applique pieces she has in little packages. So, fun, fun, fun. Okay, that's all I have to show you. But probably by the end of this weekend, I'm going to have all of Edda done. And I'm going to have all of that basket quilt done. And I might have the Bargillo quilt that I'm buying from Terry. So, lots of quilting going on around here. I really need a painter. I need somebody to paint my upstairs bedroom because I want it to be a neutral color because I've got quilts that I don't have any place to put them anymore. And so I want to be able to change that queen size bed in there and put a different quilt on every month or something. <laughs> that's the only room I really can do it in. So anyhow, that's all I know for now. So I'll be back soon. Bye.